After a few quiet months on the firmware update side of things for the Garmin GPS cycling units, the floodgates have now, well, slowly and carefully been opened. In recent weeks, there's been updates to the Edge 530, Edge 830, Edge 1030, and also the older 520, 520 plus, 820, and the Edge 1000. Now I've been keeping a close eye on these as I always do because I use those units in the Llama Lab quite often. And in summary, there's been updates for the newer Edge units for indoor cycling. There's a new training control mode for that. Updates to Climb Pro, updates to navigation, live track tweaks, updates that might address unexplained battery draining. That's a good thing. And overall, a number of stability improvements. The older Edge units don't get quite the whole swag of updates that the newer units do, but they've still received quite a few updates that are definitely worth installing. So the rollout of 5.5, which is the new firmware for the Edge 830 and the Edge 530, was the slowest I have ever seen from Garmin. Typically their rollouts go over a few days where they go 10% installed base, 20% installed base, 50% installed base, and it's a bit of a lottery until it gets to 100%. Then when you turn your units on, you will get the latest updates. Two or three weeks that took, but now it's on 100%, so no doubt if you owned one of these units, you've been prompted to install 5.5. Typically when you're running late for that group ride and you just wanna hit go and uh, get about your ride, you can click on remind later though. Just make sure you do it before your next ride. One positive change I did see from Garmin on this one over on the forums is the ability to download this ahead of time. So you could jump the queue if you weren't in the 10% rollout for the first couple of weeks for these units. They've always done that for the beta firmware, so it's good to see that now offered for the production firmware if you wanna jump the queue. And as such, it's exactly what I did a few weeks ago. Okay, here in the Llama Lab, there ain't no party like a firmware update party. So we're going to 5.5 on the 5.30, 5.5 on the 8.30, and 9.5 on the 10.30. Whew, all the numbers. Let's go, go, go. Install now, install now, and install now. Come on. Crikey. Here we go. All right, these newer units are light years ahead of the 1030 there, which is a few years older, I must say. Okay, so we're going down to just the settings to make sure everything's installed as per spec. Down about, software version 5.5, we are, good. you're still going, are you? Okay, update complete, okay, you heard me. Voice activated, obviously. About, no updates, okay, good, good. And finally, you are done. Come on now. About, okay, all updated. And you can see there that just the general use of this unit here, the 1030, is just a generation or so behind these newer units, especially when it comes to the 830 and the responsiveness of the touchscreen, as you can see here. That is quite quick. This is it's getting on in life, this one here. So why do I love firmware updates so much? Well, aside from the performance and stability improvements that you get, there's a high chance the new features will roll out and improve the value of a unit that you've already paid for. A good example of that was for the older 1030 a few months back where they rolled out a number of feature set updates bringing it into line with the newer 530 and 830 head units. So I think it's pretty cool they can breathe new life into older units such as this one. Now having said that and getting all excited about new firmware updates, it's not all happy days with firmware updates. Sometimes you'll encounter some interesting issues that make you wish you hadn't done the update. I'll give some tips at the end of the video about how to address those. Not only do I love a good firmware update, I love a good changelog and that gets me excited. So we have the changelog there from 5.10 to 5.5 on the 5.30, the 8.30 and over to 9.5 on the 10.30. And you can see there as I switch screens, they're all pretty much identical. Well, they are identical. So I'll go top to bottom here, summarizing some of the interesting points of this new firmware update. So indoor riding improvements, sounds like some of the Garmin engineers may have been locked indoors for, through the COVID period. So a few updates for that. Number one, added ability to set the system time via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth when GPS is not available. I'm multiple recording quite often indoors with these units. They will sometimes drift. My procedure has been to go outside, sit them in line of sight of the sky and uh, bring them back inside. And I've got to switch them to road mode for that. So now I can just turn them on if they're Wi-Fi connected or Bluetooth connected, they will sync up. Happy days for timestamps. I think Wi-Fi was there previously. Bluetooth must be the new one there. They've also added a free ride indoor trainer mode that enables the trainer to be set to a target grade. Previously, there were three ways you could ride an indoor trainer being controlled by one of these head units. You had re-ride a course, which was sim mode. You had level mode and you had erg mode. Now, and the dot point just below that one, is the ability to set target grade in the context menu for the trainer rides. If you want to ride along in free ride and say ride up a 10% grade, 
dit, 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 plus, 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 on that little button there, and away you go. You can ride simulated grades with some manual control. There's added a remind me prompt for trainer search. Uh, these things will go off and find indoor trainers. Indoor trainers are paired as a different sensor. They're not under the sensor menu, they're under the training and then indoor trainer menu from there. It's a bit clumsy. They tried to add some smarts to go ahead and find those trainers. It'll Anyway, the prompt's been fixed for that. If you've had a thing prompt up, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's fixed. Made a change to live track so it's not started automatically for indoor or virtual rides kind of handy. You don't want to be tricking people that you're riding where you're not. If you're running a simulated course, I guess you can turn that on given it's not started automatically. And the next dot point here on the indoor side of things is prevent light network from forming indoors. That's a good thing. You don't want your lights being turned on indoors. Typically that's what a light switch is for when you walk into the room. Uh, that'll also apply to the Varia radars that has flashing lights. There's no need for that to establish the light network and do anything indoors. Unless someone's approaching you from behind, you do want to know they're coming. Uh, next up, Climb Pro improvements. They may have lost a dot point here, I think, because Climb Pro works both indoors and outdoors. Added grade coloring to the elevation plot on the segment page. Cool. Change the time to destination data field to show estimated time to the top of climb. Cool. So it'll give you your time to the top of the climb. Handy if you're a climber, you know how much fun you've got left. If you're a descender, it's time to downhill. That's what I would call that field. So you'll know when you hit the top and the fun starts there. Fix an issue with cumulative ascent climb pro, not working. Okay, some fixes there for climb pro. Category colors not working. The final dot point here on climb pro is there. Fix an issue where some short climbs were not detected. I encountered that early on in the first few weeks of climb pro being rolled out where some short sharp climbs weren't being detected and they should have been. With the algorithm, there's a lot going on behind the scenes of how a climb pro climb is detected. Hopefully now, it's a better experience. Uh, made the mountain bike feature settings available for all activity profiles, so grit, flow, jump metrics can be enabled if desired. If you want to go full send on a road bike, you can do that. Just be careful. Uh, turned off by default for all non-mountain bike profiles. Uh, the ability to configure custom ride length that should prompt you for hydration and nutrition intake. I turn those off, they're nag screens. I know when I'm thirsty, I know when I'm hungry, but there's an option there. Add the ability to customize the track color on the map. So if teal isn't your thing for where you've ridden, you can change the color on that. Fix an issue where GPS satellites were lost more often than they should be. Now I think there's a hidden little gem in here. They don't usually prioritize the change log here, but I think that one stands out. And there's a few down the bottom that stand out as well. So that's a good thing for GPS units not to lose GPS signal more often than they should. Um, Bluetooth friendly names have been fixed so you can identify which is Bluetooth LE and Bluetooth standard. On your phone, there's two connections that are made there for the pairing. Next up, fix an issue that could cause unit to unit transfers to fail. Something I've never tried. You can transfer files between the units and courses, I believe. Something I've never tried. If you have, let me know below, but they've fixed the problem that was there for that. Next up is fix an issue with OpenStreetMaps roundabouts, giving incorrect guidance, kind of handy. And in different parts of the world, we go different ways around roundabouts. Always what I struggle with in the US and in Europe. You guys go this way around, we go. Anyhow, hopefully the Garmin can tell me which way to go around a roundabout correctly next time I'm overseas. Next up there, a few miscellaneous fixes for very long routes, uh, out and back courses, uh, weather cached, cached weather data for first bit analysis. Geez, we're really getting detailed in the change log now. Um, turn by turn map page. Okay, there's a few things here that have been fixed that you probably never have noticed anyway, unless it's one little nitpick that you've found. So a number of these updates will be effectively transparent unless you do encounter any of these issues. But again, wait till down below, there's a few interesting ones. Um, made okay the first response to live track and text message response to minimize interaction while riding. Excellent. Uh, resetting heart rate zones has become a little better without resetting everything else. Made it easy to switch between day of the month, the training plans, okay. Fixed alert sound not working when a workout is complete. I've heard people say they're now losing the beeps for the workouts. So the complete beep may work, but during the workout may not with this update. Do watch for subsequent updates. So I'll probably patch on this one. Fix the false level of timer precision on Garmin segments. Cool, Polish keyboard. Geez, we're really getting into details now. Polish keyboard support, device to shut down. Fix heading for long course names. Now the last three I think are very important and I will highlight them here. Fix an issue that kept the device from fully suspending. I have spoken to a few people who said they've upgraded. They've been using it for a week or two. They go out for a ride and the unit is dead flat. So I'm guessing they've gone into suspend mode. The unit hasn't suspended and they've encountered that bug right there. So that has been addressed. And the one below that relates to that. Fix an issue where the device could falsely report that it was fully charged after coming out of suspend mode. Double whammy there. If the unit didn't properly suspend, drained a lot of the battery, you turned it back on, it said it had battery, you go out for a ride, then it's not on Strava. Not happy days. And the final one that should make everyone happy there. Fix an issue that could cause a device to lock up. Great 
It doesn't say what, however, those are always handy to see. So that's the update roundup for the 5.5 and 5.9 for this unit here. As I said, there's a few updates for the older units we can skim through here. So the 520, which I upgraded in the Llama Lab the other day, just a few small updates here. Reduced speed dropouts when connected to indoor trainers. Excellent, another indoor trainer update for that. Fixed a workout naming issue and other minor fixes. Oh, Garmin, come on. Just need to expand those minor issue things out. Uh, here, the 520 Plus, another swag of updates there. One for improvement to Ant Plus sensors and some Connect IQ virtual machine vulnerabilities. Excellent. Uh, 820 got the same, and the 1000 got the same as the 520. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, not everything goes to plan with a firmware update. Sometimes you can wish you never even did the update. However, now that's not much of an option. These updates are getting pushed to us automatically, so you sort of have to suck it up and deal with it. How I deal with these updates uh, is, first of all, I check the Garmin forums. If I encounter any issues with the updates for these, I jump over to the Garmin forums and see if anybody's posted about that. If it's a major issue causing major problems, you can guarantee the angry ants will all be over it. Sometimes people will come up with solutions or workarounds, but that's where to jump. The Garmin forums, again, I'll link below in this video description to get you across those. Next up, and it's back to basics for me if I need to troubleshoot from there on, if I can't figure out what's going on with the, uh, the firmware or it's giving me some issues. And it's a full factory reset of the head unit and an unpairing from the phone and setting it up as if it was a new device. Now Garmin Connect will pull down a ton of my profile information and install it, so it's not as hard as what it used to be, but you'll still be looking at 10 to 15 minutes to set that up. So do that while you're sitting on the couch or over dinner one night, don't do it just before you ride. And finally, rolling back firmware. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not, depending on the updates that have been applied to your unit. And in most cases, you will lose all your settings because the newer firmwares will write a configuration file that is not applicable to the older units, so they'll have to start afresh with the older firmware. Either way, that's a pretty painful way of going. You've got to set everything up from scratch. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. And remember, Garmin Express and the USB cable is always your friend. There's a number of updates that will only come down to Garmin units using a USB cable, map updates being one of them. So do get into the habit of plugging everything in, loading up Garmin Express, checking for updates, giving it a few minutes, and it's happy days. All right, enjoy your weekend.